what do things like Judgment Day symbolize in our spiritual work? Judgment Day? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. You know, I know that it's all in the Bible and all this belief, but I, I just, you know, I don't find that an essential part of doing deep spiritual practice. The worst judgment is you judging yourself, judging other people, playing the role of God, you know, knowing better than life. That's the worst judgment, as I see it, you know. As far as someday when we're all going to be up against some, you know, Supreme Court in the cosmos and they're going to judge us, whether or not we'll go into heaven or hell, you know, I don't. I, I really don't know. You better ask some priest, you know, <laughs> some ecclesiastical person who can talk to you about theology. Because all of that doesn't really ring true to me in terms of a spiritual life. What rings true to me is, you know, any day that we spend judging other people, any day that we know better than life, any day, you know, that we live that way, I, you know, that to me is probably the worst elements of judgment. Who knows better? Who's going to throw the first stone? You know, who's going to sit in judgment of anybody else when we ourselves make more mistakes and, you know, do more stuff to hurt people? And, you know, so I don't know. I haven't. I suggest you go talk to some theologian who might give you an answer to that question. I mean, I can't imagine one day sitting in front of, you know, <laughs> some judges in the cosmos that are going to tell me whether or not I'm going to go to heaven or hell. You know, that's totally dependent. I mean, look, to me, what's heaven? Heaven is an open heart. Hell is spending your life in your head. You know, you open your heart, you know, you transform your life into a form of heaven. You know, you close it, you start thinking and analyzing and judging and doing all that stuff. You create hell for yourself. You don't have to die to experience those things. You just have to live unconsciously. And you'll be living in hell. And meditation is about building a system inside that allows you to live consciously, to open your heart, to have love inside, compassion, kindness. You know, not to be full of yourself, knowing better than everybody else and posing your will on the world. And that's what's going on in the Middle East that's going on. The Ukraine, these maniacs imposing their will on everybody, you know, in order to attain power. You know, it's just all disgusting, you know. And they create hell. They literally have created hell in Gaza. Literally. I don't think hell can be worse than what's going on in the Middle East. Or what's going on in the Ukraine. But what's going on in the minds of most people that live on the planet Earth? All that tension, all that rightness creates hell. So the answer to your question is go find a theologian. <laughs> ask because I don't have any answers to that. I mean, I just gave you. Well, you did answer my question, Stuart. Thank you. I have answered your question. Okay. Good. Does anyone else have a question for me or a theologian that they want to ask? Hi, Stuart. It's Paula. Welcome, I have a Paula. Welcome. I missed your questions. I've missed you so much. Thank you. Um, I have a two-part question. Um, it's about a friend of mine um, who the doctors say has melanoma and possibly 
uh, six months. Um, so my two part question is one, if you could talk about um, the shrinking healing technique that you described in your book, Leia, if you could. Um, and the second part of the question is dealing with this information and I'm trying to stay in the abstract with it and believing in healing and miracles, but also it's very, um, it's challenging um, to be told this. You know, uh, Paula, that book, uh, the experience I had in that book, which I wrote about, which is really based on a true experience, you know, something I lived through. Uh, it came totally unexpected. It came at a moment in my life where I never dreamed I'd ever have to do anything like that. And necessity demanded that I learn how to work on myself in such depth that I was able to bring that level of healing to that young girl. You know, and not saying I can't. Seeing what was completely alive in that person and working with that, using that as a place to work from, and then exploring the inner mechanism, arriving at this extraordinary place where the chakra system became, you know, the universe became a reflection of the chakra system. And the reason the universe was out of whack was because the chakra system was out of whack. The meridians were out of whack. Energy was not flowing. There was no harmony. There was no balance in the person and all of that had to be put together well going through that experience taught me the miracle of what this meditation is all about what it can do for somebody but you can't do it unless the person wants it and they're willing to come and go through the experience that i also learned and that is really i mean you know there was a point in my you know, years ago, when I was living in Manhattan and running that center on Fourth Avenue, where I was, I had a it was like a bakery of people lined up outside with cancer and very serious AIDS, cancer, very serious problems. And the first question I would ask them is, "Are you willing to go through what you have to go through in order to heal yourself?" Are you willing to make a commitment to God to use this problem to have a spiritual life, to use this problem as a way of going so deep inside yourself that you will connect with a higher force of energy in the universe that will heal you? Are you willing to come and allow somebody to help you do this? You know, 99% of the people were not interested. All they wanted was somebody to cure them so they could have another five or 10 years of life. That's all they wanted. And I began to realize something very important. You know, you know, it's against anything spiritual to interfere with life. It's also anti-spiritual to interfere with death. The two of them are organic energies. And a human being could use life to get to God. They can use the impending level of death as a reason to go so deep inside themselves that they become enlightened human beings. Now, I can help people do that. I can't do it for them unless they are willing to come and make the effort. So I wrote that book as a way of showing people what's possible, you know, and I don't know, yeah, it sold a bunch of copies and but I'm not sure how far it went with people. And then I see people getting cured from cancer and all kinds of problems. And the cure is almost worse than the problem that allopathic medicine puts them through. No, I'm not anti this. I'm a, I'm for anything that works. When the girl in my book, Leah, mother came to me and said, you know, at first the doctors said there was absolutely nothing they could do for that child. 
she has three weeks to live. That's what she, they told us. The first thing I told the mother was get rid of the doctor. Find somebody who will support, you know, an alternative way of working, you know. And, you know, six months later, they came to us and said, well, there's been such an unbelievable change inside this child with the cancer. It's, you know, that, you know, that they think they can operate on her. Whereas before, the whole thing was impossible. They, the child had three weeks to live. Six months of, I'm telling you, I probably some of the hardest inner work I ever did in my life. I would fly from Dallas or Denton, you know, the airport near there to Houston for three weeks. Every morning I would fly down there and I would go to the hospital room of that child and I would work on her, you know, and I would work on her. And then I'd fly back to, <laughs> to Dallas, you know, it was the Dallas airport and to Denton and to go do my life. I had a business to run, ashrams to run, People, it was unbelievable what I was going through. And, and this went on for a long time. And then they did that operation, the doctors. The doctor came out of the operating room dancing. He was dancing, big smile. And we got the whole thing. It's one of the great miracles we've ever seen in, you know, in the healing of this kind of problem. We got the whole, the doctor was dancing. It was extraordinary what happened. You know, and my God, I, you know, and I, mean, I never went through anything like it. It taught me more about healing and how to do that inner work than anything I could imagine I'd ever been through in my life. But your friends, whoever they are, they have to want to do it. They have to want to use their problem, cancer, AIDS, heart conditions, whatever it is, to have a spiritual life. Then uh, the universe will take care of them. It'll take care of them. And most people don't want to do that. All they want is... A, they want you to be a pill they can take <laughs> so they can live another five years. You know? He's very he's very proactive. Um he's also a meditator, a qigong practicer, so he's familiar very good. with good. Then he has to be willing to do what it takes yeah. to go to people that can help him and do what it takes to get through that situation. Because again, I can help people, I can't do it for them. Mm -hmm. They have to be willing to use that, you know, of, of necessity, use it to have a spiritual life. And it works. I mean, whoever that person is, you should have them li listen to this video, you know, <laughs> maybe I, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely will. Yes. Maybe it will inspire them to go do something because it can be done, you know. The problem with people is they don't want to use their illness to get to God. They want to use their illness to be cured so they can live. And they live in the exact same way, usually, that created the illness in the first place. So it happened with the young girl in my book. After she was healed, you know, they came to me and said, well, she doesn't, you know, that was just bullshit, you know, that they told me. And, you know, it was heartbreaking for me, heartbreaking, that whole situation. I even offered them, I said, look, come live somewhere else. I'll pay your rent. I'll you know, I'll support you, I'll buy the food, whatever you want, just come get out of that situation you're living in. Well, you know, she done, but it was terrible. It broke my heart. Because I knew what was gonna happen. Thank you, Stuart. He's definitely open and has been pursuing um, 
and going within. So um, he's very aware that that's what this is about. So I appreciate, I appreciate well, you. Well, have, have him read my book, Leah. Have him come listen to this talk I just gave, you know? Yeah. And uh, you can make a decision, you know? And that doesn't take away from taking chemotherapy and all the stuff they use, you know? I, you know, it, it all begins to work together when a person connects spiritually. All of that stuff works. I mean, there's somebody here right now is working for. You know, it all works together. But a person has to say, I'm going to use this to have a spiritual life. And boy, you get really strong if you do that. I mean it, you know? It's a huge test. Thank you, Stuart. Made me very strong. And then later on in my life, I had so many horrible situations I had to deal with. But having went through that thing with that young girl taught me very much how to deal with these really really horrible situations I had to deal with, with people. And I used every single one of them to deepen my spiritual life. And I realized that it was like, you know, 40 days and nights in the desert, you know? <laughs> I mean, and every one of those situations became an opportunity for me to grow spiritually. And they all fell away, went away. There's still some, you know, but they're not quite like it used to be. Thank you, Stuart. I appreciate that. You're welcome, Paula. Does, does anyone else have a question? Anyone else? I hope that question that answer wakes people up because it's so easy to get stagnant in life, you know? I just have an announcement to make. In December, early December, I'm gonna be having a retreat in New York or in Connecticut. And, you know, there are spaces open if people wanna come she get in touch with Jennifer. Those re retreats are very powerful and transforming. And I'm hoping that people can make it. And, you know, we have an extraordinary weekend when we do that. It's really powerful stuff. So if you want to attend, it, there's a fee for that. I'm sorry I have to charge a fee, but I also have to live. I have to give Caesar his due. So I got to make some income somehow, you know. But it's cheap based on what the weekend is like, it's very, very inexpensive, you know? So, you know, it's gonna be in early December. You can check with Jennifer, she'll give you the exact dates. Does anyone else have a question? I mean, you talk about hell, you know, there are people in Israel who are students of mine. There's maybe at least a half a dozen of them that come to my classes on Tuesday and Thursday, and they're going through hell. It's really hell that these people have to live through. You know, and uh, God bless them. Every time I see them, I speak with them, I just take them deep in my heart, and I try to send to them all the love I can possibly send to them so they can get through this absolutely difficult, really difficult situation that people are living through right now in the Middle East. <clears throat> and if they use it properly, they, they, it will make them, it'll help them get many, many steps closer to their spiritual enlightenment. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, thank you. God bless you all. I always tell you I come here to learn and I learn a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
so bless us. So bless you for being here, for being part of this. And, uh, you know, there'll be a class on, uh, what, on today's Monday? There'll be a class on Wednesday. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. God bless you. Thank you, Stuart. Love you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome.